Hello and welcome to the Telegraph Studio. I'm Alastair Greener and today we're going to be talking about food security. And joining me is Peter Mays from Coppert. Morning. Good morning. We all know that global demographics are changing rapidly. What do you see as some of the biggest challenges that's going to be affecting these regions? We really see that we are going to 9 or 10 billion people in 2050. Most of them will be living in Asia and India. Africa, we really believe that they will follow soon the same population growth. 70% of these people will be living in cities in 2050. Currently today, it's 50%, which means that there will be several regions on the planet where 90% of the populations will be living in cities. So we were getting mega cities with millions of people. The food production, in particular, fresh fruit and vegetables need to be produced around these cities on a sustainable way. And I think there's another trend which is coming in, which is consumer awareness. The people wants to know where and in which circumstances their food is produced. A nice example for that is the trend for local for local. That all sounds fine. The challenge I can see is that you're going to rely on the farmers changing their methods. I mean, how will Copper actually convince farmers to do that? We really see that this is something which we cannot do by our own. We need to work there with all partners in the chain to make this happen. Actually, 50 years ago, when Copper started with the introduction of natural enemies, which are beneficial insects against pest insects, we recognized a lot of resistance by the growers to start with these alternatives. But we were able to convince them to make the step to biological solutions. And what we moreover were able to do is not only to show them the sustainable solutions they were going to work with, but also the economical, feasible and acceptable solutions where we could prove them a better income and a higher yield of their production. So again, there is a very big step regarding sustainable food productions. You've talked a lot about the challenges that need to be met, such as the change in demographics, the increased population and so on. How is Copper gearing up for these changes? Actually, Copper is continuously developing and trying to put products on the market in regards to biological crop solutions. But of course, we are not doing this by ourselves. We really want to contribute with that, together with our research team, with researchers and with universities all over the globe. And Coppert also wants to play in that a partner with other players in the field to make this integrated crop protection happen for the future. It all sounds great, but are there any inherent problems with biological system solutions? Actually, in our point of view, it's not because we are working with, for example, natural enemies, beneficial insects against pest insects. And these natural enemies cannot become pests by themselves. The same is for microorganisms and biostimulants to combat diseases. So it's a fundamental requirement in our organization that the products which we develop and put on the market are safe for the environment and cannot become pests by themselves. Coming back to the challenges that we're going to be facing in the future, especially looking at global population and the growth, you mentioned they're 9 to 10 million by 2050. Isn't the danger that we're going to be so in need of extra food that actually we'll wind up looking more at quantity rather than quality and therefore the ensuing health? Not at all. I really believe that this is a dogma regarding securing the food production on our planet in the future, biological solutions even can increase the quantity and improve the quality. And it's, of course, making choices. But what we see is that when we want to overcome the health and the healthcare problems of our people, the food and guarantee the food security on our planet and to make sure that we can do that on a sustainable way, it's about these three aspects all together integrated. And there we see that biological crop protection comes in and can play an important role. 
and also to create food and balanced food, we really believe that we can overcome some of the problems that we see currently facing up today, like obesity and diabetes. So we really believe that agriculture, food production, organized in a sustainable way, can contribute to the health of the people and our planet. But why, if it is already there and it's all so straightforward, why aren't they doing anything about it? We really believe that it's time that the public opinion, that the society and the consumer stands up and raise their voices and say what they want, so that politicians and regulatory affairs can start to act and make it happen and create a framework which we all need. So you're saying that effectively the solution is coming from nature, which we might agree with you there, but I want to provoke you a little bit because surely this is really more about science and politics. Because at the end of the day, you have to convince governments, lobbyists, agencies, a whole host of different organisations to come on board with you. How are you going to do that? You have a point here. Actually, there are three aspects. We have knowledge and science. We have politicians and regulatory affairs. And we have the public opinion. For knowledge and science, we, they really have the key to fundamental change and for success. Nevertheless, the application is very much depending of politicians and regulatory affairs. They need to create a platform and need to create a framework to have these biological solutions implemented into the market and make them available for the farmers. And let me provoke actually decision makers. Currently today, all the techno technological solutions and biological solutions are already available to overcome the future challenges in regarding food production. So if it's so obvious, why aren't they doing it? It's a good question, because it's already there. It's all, only waiting to be implemented. That's why we feel that politicians and legislators have a tremendous responsibility to make it happen. And we really hope that the public opinion and the society will stand up, raise their voice and say what they want so that we can start moving on. I want to talk a little bit more about your company, Copper, now, and a little bit about their background. How did they get started? How did they become involved in food security? Actually, it started like many new ideas and inventions were born. It was Jan Copper, a small-scale greenhouse grower in the region of the Netherlands, who became allergic for the persistent pesticides he was using. And with a lot of devotion and entrepreneurship, Jan Copper, our founder, starts to seek for alternatives and he arrived in the world of natural enemies and beneficial insects. So he started to use them to combat in his cucumbers his pest which was at the time spider mite and to the tremendous success he had he decided to start to wear some productions for his fellow growers as well. So Copper Biological Systems was born. So you've already been a part of some radical changes. What about the future? Let's fast forward, say, five or ten years. Where do you see the biological system solutions developing? I mean, what's the next big thing? Okay. At Copert, actually, it's an ongoing issue. We are continuously trying to research and develop new solutions. But what we like to do is looking more from a holistic approach, looking to the total plant environment and how can we influence with less input a higher result with less chemical fertilizers and less chemical crop protection. So we believe that the next big thing is biological seed treatment or seed coating where we already at the beginning of the growth of a seed can add microorganisms and biostimulants to have the perfect germination and the perfect start for a growth. We also see that it has effect on the root system development later on and on the soil conditions in general. So we really believe that besides the steps which we are making regarding biological crop protection, we also can contribute to a crop which is healthier and more vital. And this is for us the next big thing. Well, it seems like we're going to be having a very much more biological future. Peter Mays from Coppert, thank you very much. Thank you.